Hello guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, I want to talk about data cloud provisioning. What are the different ways of provisioning the data cloud? So there are two main ways in which you can enable the data cloud. Okay. One way is creating a standalone org where your data cloud is enabled, or you can within your same Salesforce instance, you can enable the data cloud also, which is also called as home org option. So there are two ways of provisioning it. Standalone data cloud org, basically this particular option involves provisioning data cloud in a separate org from your existing Salesforce sales or service cloud org. What does that mean? So let's say you have multiple line of businesses. When we talk about big banks like JP Morgan Chase or Bank of America, when we talk about these big banks, they have multiple line of businesses and they might have several Salesforce orgs, right? So rather than enabling data cloud in one of those existing Salesforce org, what they do is they create a completely different Salesforce org and that is a standalone org in which they enable data cloud. The reason to do that is basically to keep their customer data completely separate than their data cloud org. And with the help of connectors, they can bring in the data from those other Salesforce org into the data cloud enabled org. So that option is called as standalone data cloud org, where when it is too complex of a business, you want to keep things completely separate, then you create a standalone org. And in that org, you enable the data cloud. And with the help of connectors, you bring in the data from other Salesforce org into the data cloud enabled org. The second option is when you have a single line of business or it's things are not too complicated, you can what you can do is within your same org in which you're, you're using it as a sales cloud or a service cloud, within that same org, within that home org, you can also enable the data cloud. So that is called as data cloud in your existing org. That is the second option. Now, which option to choose that depends on business needs. When you have a too complex of a business, you will go with the standalone data cloud org. When you have a simple single line of business, that is one criteria where you can choose your existing org and you can enable data cloud in that org. So data cloud in your existing org, this option adds data cloud on top of your existing sales or service cloud org. It is often referred to as a home org provisioning. Okay, so what we are going to do in the practical implementation that we're going to do, we're going to choose this second option where within the same org where it is enabled with sales cloud, we are going to enable data cloud as well. Okay, within the same one. Now, which one to use when? So the key points that you need to remember for the standalone org. This particular option is recommended for businesses with complex data needs or those who want to maintain a clear separation between their transactional systems and their unified customer data platform. Okay, so when you have multiple line of business, you can see here in this image that there are multiple Salesforce orgs, there are sales org, service org, etc. These are the existing customer data org, means these are the orgs in which your customer data is present. Then what you have, you have created a standalone org here, completely separate org, separate from these three, and that is where you have provisioned the data cloud. So this is an example of standalone org. This image is for the standalone org. With the help of the connectors, you're bringing in data from your existing customer data orgs into this data cloud provisioned org. Now, another point to remember here is this particular way of provisioning the data cloud, it requires new user and core platform licensing in the new data cloud instance. You can see here, right? Because you need new licenses for this org, you need uh, all of these things brand new for this separate org. It also may require building new customer li lightning web components in the data cloud org. So in the data cloud org, you might have to create new lightning web components to uh, display the data because you cannot bring in from the other orgs, right? So that's why you might have to create your own custom lightning web component. So that is one option of provisioning data cloud is to spin a separate org in which your data cloud is enabled. The second option is, 
existing org, using the existing org and enabling data cloud in that org. So you can see here, there's only one org here and within the same org, they have enabled the data cloud. So this particular option is suitable for businesses with a single line of business or those who primarily need to access data cloud through out of the box LWC. So this particular option is good for when you have very simple business or a single line of business and then that is the option you're going to choose. It allows the service agents to search for unified customer data directly within the service console. Okay, so if you're using service console, within the service console, service agents can get a view of that unified customer data that Data Clouds creates, okay, by identity resolution and all that. So service console, it directly gets access to that kind of data. It simplifies core integration as admins and data specialists can work within a single instance. It is going to be simple because admin, Salesforce admin, as well as data specialists can work together because it's the same org. So this is a very important point. Offers API access to Salesforce objects from within the data cloud org. Account object is stored in different database as compared to data cloud objects. So you need to have API access with the org. This is a very important point. Just because your data cloud is enabled in the same org on top of where your service cloud and sales cloud is there, doesn't mean the database behind the scene is exactly the same, no account objects and the opportunities or whatever the objects related to the sales service marketing or those clouds are going to be in a different database as compared to the data cloud objects okay so that's why it's called as off core means it's not the same where your account records are there so that's why you need api access the reason you need api access is because even though the data cloud is provisioned in the same org as where your sales or service cloud is there, but behind the scene, the databases are completely different. That's why you need API access to Salesforce object. And that is why there is a connection in built there, but you still need to have API access to access the data from the data cloud objects. I'll show you that the URL is going to be completely different once we log into the data cloud enabled org. So there are two ways of provisioning it. One is creating a separate standalone org. And the second option is within your same org, you can enable data cloud. Now, which option you're going to choose depends on your business need, more complex the business, you wanna keep things separate. You're going to enable it in a standalone org. If, if the line of business is only one line of business and it's simple business, then you can just enable it within the same org. But even though you're enabling it in the same org does not mean that the account object resides in the same database as where your data cloud objects reside. No, it's completely separate and you need API access to access those objects, okay? So these are the ways of provisioning data cloud. I hope you guys are enjoying these tutorial. I'm going to see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.